bomb smash at German production to back up the offensive on the Western Front. This time, 850 British Lancasters and Halifaxes strike at Cologne War Factory. The pounding of key German centers like this checks supplies rolling out to the Wehrmacht. Every burning factory here speeds the Allied advance toward Berlin. This is Aachen, behind today's battlefront. The Nazis' refusal to surrender forced the American forces to storm the city. Among the pulverized targets at Aachen, the cathedral still stands, a tribute to Allied marksmanship. American-made Mitchells and Bostons roar over Roermond in another Royal Air Force assault. Dutch pilots fly on a mission against a key Dutch target, hub of seven Nazi highways. Bombs fall on the big road bridge over the River Moss as Allied flyers score another hit in the great air drive on enemy production and transportation. The people of Denmark, striking back at the Germans, wrecked this large armament factory in Copenhagen. To punish the sabotage forces, the enemy destroyed stores, cinemas, and film studios. Copenhagen's famous amusement park, the Rivoli, was scorched by the Nazis, and at the same time, they decreed an eight o'clock curfew. The people replied with a general strike. After four years of Gestapo oppression, the Danes resisted openly. Warships scuttled by Danish crews before escaping to Sweden littered the harbor. In the face of Gestapo vigilance, the sabotage continued stubbornly, and the strike continued despite German attacks on the people. Hundreds of Danes were arrested and scores of Danes were killed. Against widespread hostility, the German forces struggled to maintain control. Defiantly, the population observed a two-minute silence in honor of their martyred patriots. The strike was successful. They declared a holiday, raising the Danish flag. The resistance of Denmark demonstrates that a freedom-loving people will never be content to live under Nazi rule. In the Allied push around the Skelt, British troops move inland to clear Tilburg. The first realization of freedom sweeps through the town, and the Dutch townsfolk warmly greet the liberating forces. Wren carriers push over the railway tracks toward Hurtigenbosch. The battle is fierce here for every inch, but the Allies drive ahead. Erdogan-Bosch is the pivot of the Nazi line, but the front crumbles under the Allied assault, cutting all escape routes. Allies captured prisoners and a complete German Red Cross unit. <laughs> On flooded Balkan Island at the mouth of the Skelt, Allied bombers smashed powerful German coastal guns. Covering a commando assault, Long-range, nine-inch guns vault shells from the south side, opposite Flushing. Now, 
now, under threatening winter skies, the troops head in from the sea and landing craft. Earlier air assaults have flooded Valkyren, but German suicide squadrons still hold the island. Dive bombers spearhead the infantry attack. At Flushing, the retreating Germans damage the harbor. Allied troops push through mud to hard ground. This is difficult terrain, but the Allies battle to free this major port. Flushing falls quickly to the Allies. The German commander complained that flooding of the island forced his surrender. At West Capel, on the opposite side of the island, the battle rages in one of the most daring military operations in Holland. A bad turn in the weather makes flying support almost impossible, and Royal Marine Commandos spearhead the attack. Defying the weather, airplanes of the Fighter Bomber Command dive on the Germans. From the sea, smoke screens help to cover the landing craft. Rocket ships, shown here for the first time, help to shell the Nazi-held shore. Weathering fire from the enemy sinks many of the landing craft. Delayed for 24 hours by the weather, the Allies win West Capel. With German gun batteries silenced, the great estuary now is under Allied control, and the British troops fan out to mop up the nearby island. 